How is this for a romantic location? It's vlog day 638. There's already construction supplies appearing mysteriously in my storage unit. <sighs> this is gonna happen really fast. Okay, good morning. Today's Mo Mercy Ships Monday, and uh, what's well, Sunday? But it's Mercy Ships Monday. I'm gonna go, you know, sit and do some work and get some c c coffee and all that kind of stuff. Then we'll talk about a Mercy Ships story. I'm almost caught up on sleep. We're getting there. <laughs> just how much work I had to do for Insta Freebie today. I have been reviewing Kickstarters pretty much all day, as well as got some work done on the map for my own Kickstarter, so it's another day's worth of work there. Oh no, except tomorrow's Monday and I gotta teach English tomorrow. This is gonna get, this is gonna get really dicey with a whole week of teaching ahead of me and a lot of work to get done outside of it. My mornings will be very busy. Anyways, let's go back to my place and we'll try to hit up a Mercy Ships Monday. Well, on the downside, I uh, I just recorded an entire Mercy Ships Monday, and uh, it wasn't recording. On the upside, it was kind of a rambly one, so we're gonna try and keep this concise. Uh, I've been looking through my photos, and I'm feeling very overwhelmed by the sheer volume of stories that I could be telling, whether it's pre-drone footage, climbing towers footage, because like that's how we got shots of the ship back then, at least like not really sanctioned shots of the ship, but we would climb towers in Freetown in particular. I was just thinking about the different ports that I've lived in, how they differ, how they look. I mean, living within a container yard, basically, using containers as fences, all the people that I met, the forklifts that went overboard and had to be rescued. My dad visiting in multiple countries, like you guys got to hang out with my dad again a little bit here, but we hung out in Freetown and a number of other countries. Surgical and patient stories, the worst road trip of my life. There are so many stories that I could be telling and I'm not feeling like telling any of them right now because I've got a lot of subconscious processing going on right now that just needs to needs space. I need time and space for it to just work its way through my brain. I'm feeling overwhelmed a little bit, just not in a bad way. You get to that point where there's so much input going on that everything just grays out and you're like, Meh. got a lot of work done today and I'm thinking about Mercy Ships, thinking about how you fit and it's all coming back to very big questions. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how Mercy Ships was so impactful for me personally and why it was such an important period in my life and we'll get into more specific stories in the future because I think it's really important to know that this, like, especially for people who are thinking about doing something like this, it ruins you. When we talk about Mercy Ships a lot, we talk about how it ruins you. It ruins you for normal life. It ruins you for the way you look at the world. My entire worldview was uprooted and changed. I haven't really talked about much about how I grew up or like, cause I don't want to talk about faith or politics or anything like that because it, th this isn't the place. Like one-on-one -on -one, sitting down talking over coffee or a beer, that is a good time to have like a real conversation about those things. Living abroad and living on the ship definitely was transformative for a lot of my political views, a lot of my faith-based views, a lot of my everything. And I don't know where I stand on a lot of things that I used to be very firm on, and I'm much more firm on things that I used to not know where I stood. But when you live in a ship or on a ship that has 30 plus nationalities on it at any given time, and you're just in this really condensed space, serving some of the poorest people in the world, if not the poorest people in the world, which within Western Africa, you've got some of the poorest countries in the world, like eight of the top 10 or bottom 10 countries in the world are in Western Africa. It leads you to ask a lot of questions and it really helps you to see exactly or much more closely where you stand on like Privilege Mountain, as my buddy Mike puts it. <laughs> my friend Mike talks about living on top of Privilege Mountain. I live very close to the summit of Privilege Mountain. I'm definitely like up getting close or into the snow cap fittingly because I'm very white as well. But you recognize just like your place in the world when you step into a situation that has such grave contrast. Even on the ship, I lived on the ship with multi-millionaires, you know? I don't think, I don't know if I met any billionaires when I lived on the ship, but definitely people who had hundreds of millions of dollars or their net worth was there. Right next door to them, living literally next door to them is somebody who comes from one of the poorest countries in the world who doesn't have anything. Uh, but is volunteering on the ship next to them. So you have these crazy juxtapositions with even with just within the ship itself. Culturally, you are always sitting there butting heads with people from all over the world, learning so many things. And so I value the experience so much because it just, it tore my worldview apart. And the way that I framed myself, the way that I framed the world was just shredded. And Mercy Ships provided that external framework around that to just bombard everything I thought I knew and just ruined it. And most of that was good because a lot of it was built on false presuppositions. The ways that I looked at the world were not healthy or helpful. And so it was a deeply impactful time for me, but it also left me with lots of huge questions and lots of uncertainty, asking lots of questions about purpose. Like, why are we here? What are we supposed to be doing? 
are we even helping these people? Does it matter if we help these people? Should I be spending my life giving it away or should I be trying to enjoy it as much as I can while I have it? You know, should I be serving the poor or should I be trying to make a lot of money just to please myself or should I be making a lot of money to better serve the poor? Like there's so many questions and so many of them are just mind boggling and unanswerable and just come down to what's going on personally inside of you that the time that I spent with Mercy Ships effectively took all these things that I found such great certainty and like I had a concrete worldview. I keep using the word world, the word worldview, but I had these lenses that I looked at the world through that were taken away from me and they weren't replaced. And I think that's the, the interesting and difficult part is that the more you see the world and the better you understand it, the more you realize you see so little and that you understand so little. And that's, I think, a universal truth. But the fact is that it left me with lots and lots and lots of questions. But at the same time, I was invigorated and excited to be there. And I learned a lot and I grew a lot. And I had great experiences and made amazing friends. And even though they were really hard times and I burned out really hard a couple of times and I struggled through a lot of things, I also grew. You only grow through struggle. You only grow through pain. Like there's no growth without those things. So for those things, I'm very, very grateful for it at the same time. But that's why it leaves me sitting here looking at like thousands of photos that I took over the years and stories every day came with a different story. So many things that I forget and so many things that I wish that I had better documented. And I'm left just thinking, wow, where do I go from here? And it ties into where I'm at right now because I've talked about this, but especially like as today we crossed the thousand dollar a month mark on Patreon, which is insane. Thank you so much. Like that's so validating and so cool and leaves me feeling like I don't even know how to express that. How do we go from here where as I move into being able to pursue the things that I'm most passionate about within writing and video creation and seeing the world and learning and growing, all these things like how as I pursue a life where I'm thriving rather than just trying to survive as I have been doing for so long, what does that look like? This comes back to those questions like what is your purpose? How do you help people? How do you put that to the best use you can? Talked a little bit about Privilege Mountain. Like, how do I use my American white cis male educated self to better the lives of those around me? And to give people that don't have as much privilege a window or a leg up or like, you know, whatever the analogy is, like, how do I help people with what I have? So this is what's going on in my head. And you can see that it's a very, it's a very, it's a, it's a spiral. There's a, this is a massive spiral. It's not a bad spiral, but it's one that's not going to lead anywhere particularly productive right now, but I need to give more time to my subconscious to, to figure more of this out. So all that to say, Mercy Ships was very good in completely destroying whatever framework I had to really properly view the world. And it did me a great favor by doing that because it left me open to lots of questions and new ways of thinking that I would not have otherwise been open to had I not had that experience. So I'm grateful for all of that. I'm grateful for my time with Mercy Ships and lucky to have had those experiences. How do I fit in in the future? How do I help Mercy Ships in the future? How do I help anyone? And you know, all of these things, big flipping questions that are still I'm stuck today. I'm really, really stuck. But having a good day. Got most of my work, almost all my work done for Insta Freebie. I'm gonna get back to that here soon. Should be able to move forward on some stuff with my own Kickstarter here very soon. The, they wanna start doing work on the Chateau in a couple of weeks, which is really cool and crazy. Lots of good stuff going on. So if you are still watching this and uh, are enjoying it, do think about, I mean, there are a lot of ways, you, if you're into Mercy Ships, do check out Mercy Ships and look at maybe even just supporting some crew members. There are ways to support crew members directly. They're all volunteer, they're paying their own way. If you wanna to donate to them, that's a great way that's how I survived while I was on Mercy Ships with people donating to support me. If you're interested in learning more, check out the 60 Minutes piece on Mercy Ships. It's fantastic. Scott Pelly, I think, was the guy who came to the ship. It was before I was the media liaison, but it was really cool to see him on board. And of course, if you're just interested in following along, just let me know. What are your thoughts on all of this? I don't know that I'm going to be able to respond to everybody's comments because this is really deep stuff. But if you'd like to just leave your comments below on your take on how to best help with what we have and, uh, and to make the most of our lives, wow. That's not no light stuff today. Wow. Okay. But if you, yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments. That'd be great. And once again, thank you so much to everybody who's jumped on Patreon. Speaking of changing lives, you are very, very actively changing my life. And I'm so excited to see what comes next. And we're going to figure this out one way or another. So, uh, oh, and uh, John and Lee, right, is who I met today. It's good to meet you guys. If you see this, uh, thanks for saying hi at the Peloton. It was nice to meet you guys. I'm going to call this a wrap right now. I'm going to, I would like to go for a run. Whether or not I go for a run is dependent on how hungry I am. And I'm very hungry right now. And uh, whew, man, what a what a what a brain explosion! I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Yeah.